Now, welcome to our practice. I've prepared a few items here to get into the groove today. Uh, one is a bolster. This is not essential, so don't jump up and run around. I will use this as a support lying down. Um, then I've got a couple of blocks sitting by the side of the mat also. Maybe one is really good to have as a support for the practice. If you don't have one, take something else. Foam rollers lend themselves and maybe have a blanket there as well. We are still stuck in winter and um, with that, I've chosen to stay with the topic. Um, beginning lying down on the backs, if that's comfortable for you and perhaps choosing a recline down angle pose. So um, the way I envision that for myself, if I was to practice this, is lying down on the backs, placing the knees over the bolster. You know, my hips are still a little bit tender sometimes, and that vast opening doesn't really suit me. So I can choose now to support myself with the bolster, or I could choose to place two blocks, one on either side underneath the knees. As you come to rest in your chosen pose, you might take a notice that it's uncomfortable for you very simply. If that is the case, just release your legs if you've got a bolster underneath, nice and relaxing, Shavasana style pose. So once you've found your spot, you could choose to close your eyes. And if that is not available for you today, um, you can choose to keep them open and perhaps stare straight ahead, finding a solid focal point against the ceiling. As you might have um, settled yourself in, it would be lovely to place the hands towards the lower abdomen as you rest here. Letting shoulders and elbows, however, remain quite easy. Getting in tune with this area just underneath the navel. It's related to Svadhisthana. That is one of our energy centers or chakras. And uh, because it is was it what it is, it's also related to our topic, the water element. The water element is that that we're working with when it comes to the season of winter, dealing with the colds and perhaps creating a bit more fluidity. Fluidity in our lives, as we often feel quite. Um, you know, stuck at home in these colder months, uh, but perhaps also more a flow within ourselves, perhaps allowing different points of view to find the flow in our lives. And perhaps it is really just about centering around the water element. As you might hold your hands against your lower abdomen, we will create three chants of the sound of VAM. VAM being the sound of this energy center. So while you're lying down, let's share three chants of VAM, even if you just practice them internally. Let's breathe in to begin. Vam. As you settle further, perhaps the sound assisting you. Choosing to breathe down into the hands, inhaling, and gently allowing your belly to retreat back on the exhalation. So you breathe in, the belly rises, 
you breathe out the belly forward. Perhaps expanding your breathing a little bit more as you explore the expansion of the breath and perhaps lengthening your exhalations just that little bit more and then matching your inhalation to that length. I will share a quote with you before we begin any movements and breathing practices. It is a quote uh, by Eddington. We often think that when we have completed our study of one, we know all about two because two is one and one. We forget that we still have to make a study of end. While it is up to your own interpretation to work with the quote, I think it is often the spaces in between that we are missing and with that get thrown out of our flows. And sometimes it's just as easy as creating awareness. Sometimes it is acceptance that we need. So allow your breath to find now a balance in the length of your inhalation and your exhalation. And I suggest to start by lengthening the out breath and matching your in breath. Perhaps now finding on the next exhalation a length of a count of four, three, two, one. Breathing in, four, three, two, one. If you now notice the count isn't suitable, let it go. Otherwise, keep counting in your mind and perhaps in your own pace to four as you breathe in as well as when you breathe out. As you find a balance in the flow of your breath coming in and out of the nostrils, you've created a breathing practice called Samavriti One. And for those of you that um, enjoy holding their breath, perhaps it appears to be lightly challenging. That's okay too, but it doesn't cause any strain or stress within. Then choose to keep the breath at these lengths of count of four and add a pause in between so that you could count to four as well. As after the inhalation, you hold your breath. Breathe out for the same count and then hold your breath again. Count of four, perhaps, and then starting once more. So, creating some of Riti Chu or our box breath, even length of inhalation, exhalation, and the holding of the breath full and empty. If the holding is a irritating point for you, you might shorten that by a count on either side, or maybe even two. Finding a balance, and yet staying flowing. So finding the balance here for yourself of different lengths, perhaps the same. Letting breath flow and retaining it. Noticing your points of resistance or acceptance within this breathing practice. Adding another full round of box breathing. Once you completed that round, start a last one, but finish with the exhalation, letting go 
of that last retention of breath and returning to natural breathing, breathing in and out of the nostrils, ideally. As you most likely completed, if you were resting over a bolster, do what I've just done and remove the bolster from the mat. Same if you were using blocks, helping your knees to come up and wiggling your feet apart, even perhaps to the edges of the mat. Letting your knees fall in, so we're creating a light inward rotation there around the hips. Arms can now be restful either side of the body. Maybe opening your knees lightly and then letting your knees sway gently from side to side. You might, from there, roll all the way over onto your right-hand side. I will do that, but change the way I lie. Extending as you lie on your side, both arms over the head, as usual, I will rest my left one. Both legs out long, if that suits. And creating a banana shape by moving your straight arms and legs behind you starting to move forward from your chest as well as squeezing your bottom a little so the hips are coming forward creating this banana shape and a deep breath in softening into the length side lying when raising out and then bringing your top knee in towards the chest and give that a little squeeze in maybe even drawing your nose down towards this knee Perhaps your hand can reach down to the ankle or the foot as you bring the knees back together. The foot may be in your hand, but you can do so without holding on to and knees together. As you take your next inhale, maybe the foot moves into the hand. Perhaps it's more the knee moving behind you. As you reopen your chest, bring your hips forward round to the front of the body, arching into the back. Take a deep breath and then relax. Relax the leg back out. Take one more deep breath as you stretch and then an out breath as you fall onto your back like jelly on a plate. We will change sides. Of course, you won't move around. You will just roll over onto the left side of the body now. Again, extending both arms, both legs are extending out long. You might then move your straight legs and arms behind you, start to push your chest forward, squeeze your bottom so the hips are moving forward, taking a deep full breath in. As you breathe out, relax into your side lying pose. And then perhaps drawing your upper knee towards the chest, maybe even curling in and tucking your nose towards the knee. You could then choose to slide your hand down to your ankle or maybe even your foot. No matter whether you hold on or not, guiding knees back together, extending your bottom leg perhaps, and either bringing the knee out behind you from here or bringing the foot into the hand. Start the same process, squeeze your hips and chest forward, arch, maybe even deepen the back bend here, take a deep breath. And then relaxing again, as you extend your leg out, reaching your arms back over the head, take a breath in, and then again, just flopping onto the back like jelly on a plate. 
as you might have to rearrange yourself on your mat, lengthening the arms down by your sides and placing your feet down onto the floor. Taking your feet to about hip distance apart and so are your knees. The outer edges of the feet um, almost parallel, toes pointing forward. The only thing I'd ask you to do is tilt the pelvis there. This is why I remove one of my hands so it's visible, but both hands are down by the sides for support for the movement. While you breathe in, tilt the pelvis so your spine flattens down onto the floor. And while you breathe out to the opposite, tilt the pelvis the other way. And we're arching away from the mat. A breath in to tilt and flatten the spine. And our breath to tilt the other way and arch away from the back. Might like to repeat that a few times. If it feels good, there's no need to change anything in the movement. If it would be enjoyable, you might set your feet a bit further away from your bottom than usual and perhaps the rocking of the pelvis becomes a little bit easier, perhaps even more beneficial. For the next round, you can keep your feet as they are if it still serves you well. On the in-breath, now squeezing your hips up, lifting the hips up and maybe holding them there. Keeping your shoulders grounded, the palms of the hands there as a support. Maybe landing your feet in your perfect spot while being in the shape. And perhaps drawing your tailbone up to the backs of your knees. Take another deep breath in here. Inhaling again, as your arms might reach over the head. Stretching up towards your fingertips, pushing your tailbone up a little bit more towards the backs of your knees. And on the outbreath, slowly rolling the spine down and releasing your arms down by the sides of your body. As you find your spot here, your knees might sway again, never so gently, just from side to side. Finding your soft spot there. Your choice from here to hug both knees in towards the chest, maybe then rocking still a bit from side to side, now rolling over your spine. And if this feels wonderful, just drop over onto your left hand side and come to a seat or perhaps rocking as often forward and back and coming to a seat like that. We're actually not staying seated, but changing to an all four stand. So you might come on top of your hands and knees, separating your knees so they're landing underneath the hips directly and placing your hands at about shoulder distance apart but um, a little bit forward from underneath the shoulders so as you set yourself up let your fingers be wide and lean towards bases pets of the fingers as you find a solid stance on all fours take an inhale soften the elbows lift your tail and raise your gaze and while you breathe out, straighten your arms and begin to round the spine. So the in breath, the cow position, tail and gaze are rising. On the out breath, straighten your arms, rounding the back. And keep flowing like this for a few more breaths. Nothing else to do, but just a few more breaths here moving through the spine. You could choose to empty the lungs as you breathe out of the mouth for the next rounding. And maybe repeating for two more breaths.
then neutralizing your spine and finding stability as you press down through the tops of feet and hands, holding stability while you breathe in to extend the right leg back. Bend your knee and exhale and draw the knee up towards your shoulder. While you inhale, rotate to extend the leg and then breathe out and open again, squeeze towards the shoulder. We'll repeat that, breathing in, length, breathing out, a loving squeeze to the shoulder. Let's repeat that twice more. And as you hold your last one up towards your shoulder, extend the leg out directly to the side and land the foot on the floor. Turning your toes forward there as you draw your hands back towards the knee and take an inhale as you raise both arms up, standing on your knee. And as you breathe out, let the right arm drop and come directly into a side bend. Allow this shoulder to be easy, no pulling it anywhere, but keep the shoulder back. Your arm either pointing to the ceiling or reaching over the head. The hand resting against the leg, extremely light. Leaning a tad bit further over as you exhale and perhaps choosing a gazing point, deliberately engaging the neck in your choice. Breathing in. As you brace out, rolling your arm in and down, placing your hands back onto the mat, lifting just uh, the foot off the ground, but the toes are stay, the big toes staying down, and circle that around until the extended leg is behind, then land the knee back onto the floor. Returning to your solid all force stance and repeating three rounds of cat and cow movement while inhaling, soften your elbows, lifting tail and gaze. As you breathe out, perhaps of the mouth, rounding the spine. Two more. When completed, returning to your neutral spine, that is including your neck. Find the stability back by pressing into the mat with shins, tops of the feet and hands. Again, keep stability while extending your left leg back. Inhale here. Exhale as you bend the knee, draw the knee up towards your shoulder in a little squeeze. As you inhale, rotate, lengthen spine. Exhale, squeeze back up with bent knee. Let's repeat three more breaths. Inhale, exhale, squeezing up. And holding it there. As you might extend this leg straight out towards the side, turning your toes forward. Let the hand slide in and as you curl up, take a deep breath in and lifting both of your arms up. As you brace out, come into your side bend and the left hand is now resting down. Your upper arm, as well I might modify, could be extended straight to the ceiling or over the head as you bend to your side. Same as we had on the other side, the hand is very loose that is resting against the leg. So not only are we creating a stretch here in the side, but also some strength in our waistline as we approach Parikasana or gay posture. Have you chosen your gazing point? Let's roll our arm and shoulder forward and down, bringing hands back onto the mat for the all four stands, lifting the foot, but your big toe, and then circling your big toes slowly around behind you as the leg might be there extended, landing the knee back down. Now you might tuck your toes under from there and then stretch your hips up and back, 
your arms forward as you find a puppy posture. You could from there squeeze all the way back, bottom to heels for a slight stretch through the soles of the feet. And with that, your back line, you might rock a little bit with your pelvis from side to side over your tucked under toes. On your next breath in, rolling the spine all the way up, sliding hands a tad bit further forward, untucking the toes and landing in a kneeling plank, drawing the tailbone down towards the backs of the knees to stabilize, creating a lot of strength up in the upper back as you breathe in. And while you breathe out, keep your elbows nice and close and come to land all the way down on the front of the body, resting the forehead down and sliding your elbows out to either side. Spread them out onto the floor. While the elbows are spread onto the floor, aligning your thumbs at the height of your eyes, pressing down into the tops of the feet now so the knees are lifting. Keep it this way. Take a breath in, push into your hands, Start to lift your head and chest and then land your elbows directly underneath the shoulders. If this is a little bit much for you, you can slide, slide the elbows a tad bit forward from here. Just taking care of how this feels in your back. With your hands landed, the tops of the feet still pressing into the mat. And let the pubic bone join in and push that gently to the floor and then lifting your heart a little bit further forward so that you might come a bit more out of your shoulders. As you hold your swings pose here, choice to stay. You can release, of course, to the floor at any time. Or you might choose on your next out bus to release tension in the lower body, bending your knee, and then inhaling to lower it again, breathing out to bend the other, and inhale to lower it. You might squeeze your heel quite close towards your buttocks if you like. And if all of this feels good, keep lifting from your heart space. The pubic bones are pressing into the floor, although your legs might be moving. And if you choose to continue, you might now Choose to look down towards the bent knee or just over the side. We'll go one more round to each side, unless you prefer to rest. When you have completed, engage into the swings once more fully on the in-breath, but then let your elbows spread out as you breathe out. And while your head is landing, slide the hands underneath your shoulders. Take a breath in to rise again onto your hands and knees. My suggestion now is to bring the knees out wide as the mat, touch the big toes together, and then sink back towards the heels. If it feels right, you can lower uh, the upper body. Some of you might rest the head into the hands. Others might use a block in front and yet others might rest their forehead down. Arms can extend towards the front or be wrapped around your knees if you prefer. Let yourself sink into the shape for a couple of breaths. If you need any little movements there, wiggles, please enjoy those. Mm. On the next inhalation, let's lift back up onto the hands and knees and take the knees back underneath your hips. Your choice again to tuck the toes under. If it feels right for you, raise the knees off the ground and find a downward facing dog. Please don't mind my little adjustments in the shapes. Just me walking out the legs on the spot. Creating some fluidity in the lower part of the body. And then beginning to walk 
your hands back in the direction of your feet, ending at the back of your mat in a standing forward fold. Allowing yourself perhaps to have the hands down or even a block underneath your hands to support you, rocking a tad bit forward and back on the feet. Notice how that might impact how you're feeling in your back. And then resting in a hanging ragdoll like forward fold. Exhaling slowly now to uncurl the spine into a standing posture. And take a breath in. Perhaps both arms are lifting as you extend your body fully. Maybe adding a subtle standing back bend. On the breath out releasing your arms down by your sides, finding the mountain at the end of the mat. We will move forward today rather than backwards. And you might choose to place your hands just on your hips. We will shift our weight lightly towards the left foot. Option, raising right heel maybe right knee as you find your balance there keep the hips at balance you might even extend your leg forward and point your toes just options now then landing the foot down in front of you and adjusting the feet to hip distance stance so your pelvis is unchanged in how it feels underneath your hands. Taking a breath in now as you squeeze your shoulder blades together and perhaps lift your heart. Soften the front knee and breathe out to fold towards it. You can go as low or as little as you like. But keep squeezing your shoulder blades together, your elbows backwards and try and find a length in the front leg again as you fold towards it. So your gaze might be down towards the knees at this point. If you find you need that little bit of extra support, you could release your hands down the leg. Perhaps they stay here, perhaps you're using a block or two. Now, releasing your hands down wherever they were, bring them together at the inside of your front foot and turn your back toes outward. As you take the breath in, lift a little bit off the floor and start to raise your left arm as you turn open towards Trikonasana or your triangular shape. If your hand is still on the floor, on the block, consider lengthening not just your leg, but also your spine. If you need to adjust your stands a little, feel free to do so. As you find your length here in your triangular shape, Now, as you next inhale, take a bend into the front knee and then lift the arm from below while you straighten the leg. Let the other hand rest onto the back leg and exalt a triangle. So it is now the right arm that is reaching upwards, the left hand that is loosely resting. And you might bring a bit more strength into your back leg, lifting out of the hip and maybe reaching a tad bit further backwards. Your choice from here is to take a hold of the wrist and help it a little bit further up and back. As you breathe in, bend both knees, let your arms swing down. Take another inhale to lift both and bring a gentle bend into the front knee to complete a warrior two. 
as you open your arms to either side into a twist, arms still out to shoulder height, lifting your back heel. Option now, aeroplane pose, as you might lift the back foot off the floor and flex it. Keeping your toes facing to the mat, the hips facing down. Arms might remain out wide, or if you choose, you could take both arms forward there as well. Let's land the feet next to each other and soften back down towards the forward then. Bending both of your knees now and lifting the arms out to either side as if they were your wings. Standing here like you were in a chair pose, but have your arms extended backwards. The palms of the hands are facing down, your fingers are spread out. Take a look down towards the floor and either you stay here, many benefits there in strengthening, or you might choose to raise your heels off the floor and higher onto your tippy toes. A little balance here on both feet. Release the hands to interlace behind your back and then fold it forward and perhaps your arms are lifting away from the back. Let's bring the hands back down to the floor and take a breath in. And as you exhale, starting to uncurl the spine, rising again to your standing position. You might enjoy a full body extension, Urtvahasthasana as you breathe in, and then landing again, your hands onto your hips. Take a deep breath in through the nose, fill your lungs, and have a long, slow breath out nose or mouth. As you shift your weight, steady gaze towards the right, raising the left heel. You might lift uh, the left knee. You might extend the leg and yours could be a little bit higher than mine if it works. Finding your balance, balance in the pelvis too and then landing the foot down directly in front. Adjusting your stance to comfortable hip distance so the hips still feel the same underneath your hands. And then squeeze your shoulder blades and elbows together behind you and take a breath in to lift heart and gaze. On your out breath, then might you bend your front knee a little to approach the pyramid. And as you're folding down, the nose moves in the direction of the knees Maybe it doesn't go quite that far. Allowing a bit more push down into the ball of your front foot and feel the pelvis being beautifully balanced underneath your hands. And you might from there slide the hands down the leg if you haven't yet for support. Perhaps there's a block in front. Perhaps you just press your hands down onto your shin or the floor either side of the foot. Maybe bringing the hands to the inside of the front foot and turning your back foot a little bit open. We're approaching a triangular shape. So the hands might come a bit off the floor and on the in breaths, could you extend your right arm towards the ceiling? As you're opening, consider coming a little bit further away from the ground and lengthening your spine out, feeling your stands in both of the legs, micro bends in the knees, and maybe a perfect gazing point up or downwards. With your next inhalation, bend into the front knee and reverse the triangle by bringing your lower hand up and resting the other down. Now, your arm might extend all the way over the head as you change sides. Exalted triangle shape. Front arm reaches up. 
backhand is loosely resting. Perhaps reaching with the backhand to the front wrist and extending a little bit more, extending up and backwards though. Leaning a bit more weight into the back leg to lift out of the hip there. Inhaling. And as we slowly bend the front knee again, extending your arms out to shoulder height, exploring a warrior two, your drishti comes forward. We both stay here, opening as you turn your arms, lifting the back heel, keep arms out to shoulder height, and perhaps starting to lean forward, maybe even taking the back foot off the floor, finding your aeroplane pose. Have a flexion here in the back foot, extending the leg, leaning towards the front, the hips facing down and so your toes. One more breath, maybe your arms reaching forward now for this breath. Then landing your foot to the mat and releasing into a soft forward bend. Bending both of your knees as you fly your arms back out like wings by your sides, rising into something like a chair pose to begin with. Knees are bent, hips are bent. Got the sitting bones open, your core is on. And your gaze might be lightly down, the palms of the hands face down and your fingers are spread. The same option here, changing that into a balance by lifting the heels, maybe coming all the way up onto your tippy toes. while you land the heels again and when you interlace find the odd interlace behind your back fold back down into your forward fold and perhaps lifting the arms away from the back a little stretch here then let your hands release to the floor Take a breath in and extend your spine forward into a half lift. Then bring your knees down towards the mat, keeping your props nearby and maybe using a quite folded blanket to elevate your sitting bones off the mat. So instead of a folded blanket, you can also choose a rolled up end of the mat. Extending your legs out in front. Hugging your right knee to the chest. And letting the knee fall out to the side. This is why I've got a block here. I'm supporting my knee. This is just an option. Bring your hands down. Bend the straight leg and pull it into the hip socket. Lengthen your spine on your in-breath. Keep a strong flexion of the foot and breathe out as you walk or sway your way forward. And you might gently lower the gaze here too. Allowing yourself to surrender into a head-to-knee posture. Noticing the way you are approaching this shape. Is that within an internal way of flowing? Or are you pushing into resistance there? How can you adjust your own body to be within your limits, but working toward an extension? And is your breath supporting that? Perhaps a good idea to lengthen your out breath now. Walking your hands back in to a seated position. And if the leg isn't fully extended, this might be the time. Placing your right hand fingertips behind you and the other hand to the outside of the knee. 
as you exhale, use those hands to twist, then soften through the shoulders. Maintain only gentle touch behind or maybe fingertips into the mat to help you sit up tall. Keep the strong leg active by flexing the foot and sit solidly on both sides, sitting bones. With your inhale, turn to the front. With the exhale, relax the body, extending both legs back out in front before hugging the left knee in towards the chest and perhaps letting that knee fall out to the side. Always welcome to adjust the position where it feels right, maybe supporting the leg on the side. Bending the knee on the straight side, pushing the leg back in as you shuffle to sit, flex the foot, take a breath in and lengthen. And as you breathe out, find your way belly towards the thigh. Wherever your hands are landing on the leg, on the foot, it doesn't matter. Keep your shoulders easy, your gaze slightly down and check back in with the inside. Is the breath flowing? Are you utilizing the breath? Are you lengthening your exhales? Deliberately bringing your breath out of balance to support the shape. Are you working towards straightening the legs? Are you accepting and acknowledging where you're at? It is oftentimes when we push into a resistance too hard, and I'm talking about our lives right now, that we have setbacks. So these postures on the mat are basically preparing our minds to deal with our daily lives. As we slowly walk the hands back, you might choose to extend the straight leg if you haven't done so quite yet, placing your left hand fingertips behind you, or back off the right hand to the outside of the knee, and then using both hands and an out breath to twist. Let shoulders settle, eyes might close, and grounding firmly through both of the sitting bones. From my observations, it's oftentimes we're leaning the way we're moving towards. Yet we want to be firmly grounded here to turn and see what is on our side. With the next inhalation, turning the head forward and with the out breath, relaxing the shape. I will now remove this block, but I will keep a block by the side of the mat. Also coming off my sitting support, maybe you would like to roll out your mat or prepare like myself the blanket as a cushion by the side. You could bring your bolster back in, um, using that perhaps for relaxation or even for our upside down support. I would ask you to have whatever you are using by your side and slowly lower your upper body back down to the mat. Take the knees with you and give them a little squeeze in, maybe rocking gently over the back, finding the balance from the previous movements. And you could choose to simply extend your legs from here towards the ceiling. If this feels right for you, you can pop fists underneath your buttocks. Or you might choose uh, that that is not your thing and you bend your knees, you place the feet back onto the mat, take a block or a bolster, and while you lift your hips up, you can draw the bolster underneath or your block. And it might be a flat block or it might be a halfway up block position. So whatever your choice might be, you could then bring your knees back over the chests and perhaps extending the legs. 
if you find a good support by placing your item bolster or block underneath you you can let go of that and relax your arms maybe you would enjoy closing the eyes or steadying your gaze and perhaps just bringing awareness to flow from feet and legs pelvis when we invert we are reversing or inverting our flow as well as naturally here everything moves down towards the feet we're now moving from the feet in towards the center this posture is wildly beneficial um, as it is an inversion and gives our heart a little break as well as it encourages lymph to flow from our feet downwards back into the body so maybe allow yourself to contemplate on the flow that occurs even though they've inverted bending your knees loosely if you prefer keep a hold of your support item if you were on an item please land your feet down lift your hips back up and release your spine to the floor ever so slowly only to lift your legs back up one more time if it suits and create a bit of movement with your legs and if that feels right create a bit of movement with your arms now too see if you can move a little bit wider out to the sides being really creative with the movements and as everything might be flowing here as you move on your back, just notice how much effort is arriving in your torso as in sensations. And let everything just point towards the ceiling, let the shoulders drop, let feet, knees, elbows, hands and wrists soften. Take a deep breath. And on the exhale, squeeze your knees in towards the chest, maybe your nose even to the knee and curling yourself into a little ball. And landing your feet onto the ground. Perhaps sliding a bolster underneath the knees. Perhaps keeping the knees bent, if that is you, widen your feet and let the knees fall in for a constructive rest. If you have a bolster and draw your legs out long, let them extend and the toes roll a little bit out so the hips are easy. And as you come to rest in your Shavasana now, you can choose to also touch together your thumb with your little finger just letting that rest in each hand the backs of the hands might be resting on the floor there jala mudra as you might have your eyes closed at this point just checking in with those two fingers touching together Perhaps there's a sense of flow arising just between these two fingers or a tingling sensation. Notice what happens with your breath 
although you might not control your breathing at this point, you might still feel your breath being directed down towards your pelvis. Maybe the area where we previously rested our hands. Allowing this gentle flow of breath and attune to all that you find. Your breath might still be flowing gently down into the pelvic area, the home of the water element. Perhaps visualizing all the expressions of water within your pelvis, lakes, rivers, seas and streams. The quality of water, fluidity. As your pelvis is infused with fluidity, the stream of liquid energy flows outward to nourish your entire being. Feel a harmonious flow of water from your pelvis expanding energy into your whole being. everything flowing in harmony. Maybe you can even see the water coming from the pelvic area and extending through the torso into arms, legs, head. Perhaps visualizing that harmonious flow in and outward. And notice what might be hindering you from engaging in your full potential, allowing life to flow. One of our obstacles might be not accepting. Knowing that when we do accept ourselves, we find love there. You might visualize now a magical box of self-acceptance appear before you. Your unique qualities reside within. Open the box. Are things simple now? Invite yourself as complete just as you are. And perhaps inquire, am I assisting myself accurately? Or am I distorting my reality in a self-defeating way? Can I simply accept myself? Find ways of seeing yourself, embracing imperfections, feeling incomplete, selling yourself short. Take yourself just as you are. Maybe even on your next breath, extending your arms out to either side. And on your out breath, give yourself a hug round hands to shoulders perhaps, 
And you might take another deep breath and open your arms and embrace yourself again on the out breath. Maybe it's just the other arm on top then. Let your arms relax. Keep breathing a little bit more deeply. And choose whether you like to move or stretch before finding your way to join me in a seated pose. You might then choose to join the palms of your hands together at heart center. Maybe even lightly bow the head to the heart. Acknowledging once more yourself. But knowing that you can look at yourself in different ways. Perhaps a change in perspective is what creates flow in our lives. As we gently bow and extend toward each other. Namaste.